the Wastelanders, it's Jewel Smith playing as Fiona, General of the Minutemen in Fallout 4. Today I'm going to give you a tour of County Crossing. Right now I'm at Finch Farm, which was the site of my last settlement tour. So let's check the map here. There's Finch Farm. And just a little ways down the road is County Crossing. I'm giving this settlement tour series in the order in which I unlocked the settlements, more or less. So as I came around here through Green Top, the Slog, Finch Farm, then I unlocked County Crossing. Now one thing that I did at Finch Farm since my last video, I added a junk bot. Because I realized that Finch Farm did not have a robot. I like to give settlement robots to my settlements. And I thought, you know, with the whole theme being junk pile, that Abraham Finch would appreciate having a junk bot. So I made him a little floating Nuka-Cola junk bot. But enough about Finch Farm. You can watch the Finch Farm video if you want to know more about the rest of Finch Farm. We will head to County Crossing. And it's not terribly far away. We're going to take the safe route for those who might be playing on survival mode. And even for those who aren't. Now there is a Minuteman checkpoint there right here just west of Finch Farm. Oh, there's a Raz tag. And if you come to the checkpoint and then head south. Oh, you'll run into a Meyer Lurk. How convenient. And just follow the road. And if you want to run, you can run, or you can stroll, and this will take you straight to County Crossing without too much hassle. We'll avoid Reeb Marina and some of the less savory things over there. Ooh, I'm getting some lag. Ah yes, there's the National Guard training facility that I think I've been sent there to clean out the feral ghouls about 15 times since unlocking this settlement. Ah look, and off in the distance you can even see Bunker Hill, the little white tower there. But we're not going to tour that today. Here's County Crossing. Now the highlight of County Crossing in my game is that I have a supermarket built here. Now it's County Crossing I guess because there's this crossroads. Oh, that's not nice. And that road will take you right to Bunker Hill and into Boston. So, oh, hey John. With me, as always, is my sunshine, Hancock. Now, with County Crossing, don't, I don't know. Well, I do know. I know what inspired me here. My husband and my daughter also play Fallout 4. But when my husband was playing, he built a supermarket at Starlight Drive-In. And I kind of liked the way he did his supermarket. And I said, oh, that's cool. I want to build a supermarket. So, for County Crossing... I built this supermarket and we'll go inside in a bit but everything else about County Crossing kind of revolves around the supermarket and County Crossing also has kind of a big nasty ugly building over here that you can't scrap and it's kind of hard to work with so I did my best so I've got that building and the supermarket, that's kind of the main, you know, the main elements of this settlement. 
So we'll start with an outside perimeter tour. This is the entrance here. Using shack bridges, as I often do, they make easy border walls. There's the supermarket. Now some of my settlements, well many of my settlements, the guards are Minutemen. They're settlers who are wearing Minutemen uniforms. Here, this guy, he was one of the original residents of the settlement. I think, if I recall correctly, when I unlocked it, it was him and his son, or well, two guys, I guess. I assumed it was. I think it's a father and son. So he's not in Minutemen clothing. He just happens to be the person I assigned to guard duty from the very beginning of this settlement, and I just kind of left him on guard duty. And his son is in there farming. So I just kind of left them to their original jobs. This settlement does have, you can see through there, one of those big generators that makes 100 power and everything is powered off of that. So little shack bridges, they, they keep people out well enough. And then I also like to build buildings as part of the perimeter. So the back of the building is part of the wall of the settlement and it faces inward. If you've watched any of my other settlement videos, you'll know I do that quite a bit. I like to have enclosed settlements. It just, it feels more realistic to me. Of course, if it was really realistic, the walls would be like cement, right? It'd be like a fortress that nothing could get in, like Covenant. But uh, building up really huge and and efficient, you know, tactical walls, build you know, it uses up a lot of the the size bar. And since I'm working on the PS4 with limited amount of space. I use the shack bridges instead. They work just as well. I used to try building junk walls or, you know, before they had cement, because I think the cement was introduced by Wasteland Workshop DLC. But before they had cement, I tried doing junk walls and the junk walls just use up so much of the size bar. I think it's based on the elements that go into it because the junk walls have rubber and steel and wood and it just uses up that size bar. But the shack bridge is not so much, so I switched to that. And this icky puddle over here in this corner. That's that original building I told you about. You can see part of it there. Alright, so this is the outside. Can't scrap that big oak tree. So I just left it there. We seem to get attacked from that direction most of the time, from that little lot over there. All right, so here we are. We will enter County Crossing properly. Now I built this big tent thing just because at the time, I, I don't remember, does this come with Wasteland Workshop? I think these little raider tents come with one of the DLCs. And when I got that DLC as it was released, I said, ooh, let me play around with that. So that's what I did. I have this neat little tent area here. It looks cool at nighttime with all the lights up there. You see it? Maybe we'll be here long enough for the sun to go down and you can see that. But this settlement comes with two fire pits. I did not put those in. It just comes with those. So I just kind of worked around them and this water puddle. So I put the water pump right there over the water puddle. 
The caravans like to come in and sit around this fire, like Doc Weathers is doing right there. So I didn't want to build over those fires. I just kind of left them as they were. You, you know, I think this gal... Uh, dude, stop trying to talk to me. When the doctors try to talk to you, you can't go into workshop. This gal, yeah, she needs to be assigned. I recently sent her over. She was my last settler. She's going to go in my salon. All right, there we go. Business done. All right, so yes, this was the original building. So I built up around that. You can see some of the crappy walls there. But here's where the workshop is. So that's kind of where I ended up putting weapons, armor, and power armor workshops. And then around off of that, I have this little wooden deck. And I built this building here. This is one of the first little buildings I built in this settlement. And this is a nice little house. Just one house. I mean, I know I could have squeezed more beds in here, I suppose, but... I put these together make kind of a little double bed or queen size bed for two settlers. And they've got a stove and cabinets, a little dinette area, a couch, which John is demonstrating for you. Yeah, nice little house in here. I used to have a water pump right here, but it kept getting attacked and it would get broken whenever the settlement was attacked. And then one of the add-ons added these water pumps that you could put in the ground, it didn't have to be in water. So I used that version of water pump instead. So it would be inside the settlement and less likely to be broken. All right, so I come up in here, and I've turned this old building into kind of an apartment building. See, it says for rent. <laughs> so there's all these little rooms in here. Nice little living room area, common area for the settlers. See, you can see some of the old crappy walls that I had to build around. Oh, why is the coffee pot in here? Things falling through the floor again. And of course, the hairstylist was added by the Vault Tech Workshop DLC. So this was added just recently. Most of the settlement I built up pretty early in the game. But then as the DLCs were released, I would come in and, and add a few elements here and there from the various add-ons. So the salon was one of them. This area here really didn't have much in it before. But after I got Vault Tech, I put in a hairstylist. Got work to do. Can't talk now. Yeah, you look really busy there. Right, so let's go upstairs. This is where the Vault Tech representative lives. Uh, the Vault Tech rep is one of the characters that you can run into in the game, random encounter kind of thing, I guess. Well, I mean, not, not strictly random. He's in Good Neighbor, but you'll run into him, and then depending on what you say to him, you can get him as a settler. So I have the Vault Tech rep. He lives here, and of course, he works in the supermarket because he's a salesman from the old world times. 
So I imagine he's the manager of my supermarket. But this is where he lives. He has a nice little view of the settlement here. I used to have this staircase was the only way up to the upstairs part. But they seem to have a hard time navigating that staircase for some reason. So I added the staircase over here as well. Plus this allows me to get up on the roof, which is where my fast travel spot is. So if the settlement's under attack and I need to fast travel here, I'm in an excellent tactical position to shoot at things. But we've got a couple more apartments up here. County Crossing has, I think, really nice places to live. They have they have nice, spacious living quarters. And I like to think it's because of the supermarket. You know, this settlement is thriving. It's a nice little center of commerce located at the crossroads. It's doing really well. Not as well as Bunker Hill down the street, but well enough. Okay. More apartments over here. More beds. Now look at that. Why did that fall through the table? There's no sport this film. Oh, I really wish they would fix that bug. That's where it goes. It doesn't go on the floor, does it, John? Alright, so this is where most everyone lives. And then we do have several farmers working here. So we have this nice little farm. What? This place just has farmers? <laughs> yes, Cricket, this place just has farmers. Farmers and shopkeepers and this building is also part of the original settlement. It can't be scrapped. I think this is where the, the original two settlers were living inside this building. But I turned it into a bathroom. So if you come in here, I put up walls and dividers. There's the ladies restroom. And over here is the gentleman's restroom. And then around back here is the bathtub. So people can bathe, have their weekly baths. It is the wasteland, you know, it's kind of hard to stay clean. I don't think people really care as much about cleanliness as we do in the real world. Right, here's the little Minutemen guard barracks as I have in so many of my settlements for the Minutemen guards. Little cots, little footlockers, and the Minutemen flag. I only have two Minutemen guards here because like I said there's one of the original settlers he's a guard and then I brought in two Minutemen. There's one guy over there with his missile launcher and one guy over there. The only way you get older is so that's their little Minutemen barracks there. And then we'll continue down the row. This is where a couple of the farmers live. Now that red chair was added by the Nuka World DLC and I came in here I did have all blue chairs but after Nuka World was added I came in and made a few of the chairs red I don't know why but I did why not all right 
And then down here, oh, there's a scavenger. And he lives in here. So his place is kind of a little mishmash of found things. I think one of the farmers is his old lady. So another spot for a farmer to live. And in this corner, we have another guard tower. Lots of turrets. Now I know I could just put the power pylon right on the ground, but I don't know. I was kind of experimenting with this. I think I did this at the castle as well. The power pylons are on these little platforms because the ground is uneven. When I'm trying to place them somewhere where the ground is uneven, I feel like that just, I don't know, makes it look a little better. Oh, so many turrets on this end. <laughs> Like I said, we get attacked from over there so much. Couple of missile turrets on the roof of the supermarket. I did have Strong living here for a little while. The big super mutant companion. But he kept messing up the supermarket. He would he would go inside the supermarket and then he would they would get attacked from over there and he would aggro and he would just start messing up everything in the supermarket. <laughs> so I had to send him away. Stop. I don't know if I really needed to put that there since the caravaneers were coming in anyway. See like Doc Weathers is hanging out over here. Oh, sun's starting to go down. So you're starting to get that golden glow in the tent. Isn't that nice? But yeah, I don't know if I strictly needed to put that in, but I did. It, there's this little kind of a, like a little bluff here, you know, this little patch of ground. It just seemed like a good spot for it. This unit is ready to serve. Hey there, Guardian Angel. She's the settlement bot. And I made her as sort of, because this is a, a trading post sort of thing with the supermarket. Well. Stop turning around. We're trying to look at the back of you. She's got like a backpack on. So what I like to imagine is people come and shop here and then they would use her to help get their goods home. If somebody came in and bought a bunch of supplies, they would say, okay, guardian angel, go with this person and help them take their supplies home and then come back. Of course you can't, I mean, that's not something you can actually do in the game, but I'm just saying for for role playing and head cannon. She would help people take their groceries home when she wasn't otherwise helping to defend the settlement. All right, so let's come in here. And here's the supermarket. And of course, all of the items that I've so lovingly put on all of the shelves have started falling down because even though I just did a walkthrough of this settlement not five minutes before I started streaming and everything was fine, as soon as I push that streaming button, everything goes to shit. This table had a whole bunch of vegetables on it. I have no idea where the vegetables went. Hello, viewers. Honestly, I do not know. I think they all fell through the floor, but I had corn and carrots and produce right there. So that's a little produce stand. You have no idea. Shopping baskets. I actually had a pile of shopping baskets right here. But of course, the pile is gone. It's probably under the floor somewhere. Because, folks, in the immortal words of Todd Howard, it just works. And by works, he means not work. Oh, 
little gun shop over here. I had some other weapons sitting on the shelves, but apparently they're gone as well. <sighs> All the things that were on these shelves, gone, gone. Look at that, unused enamel bucket. How often do you see that in the game? Not often. At least I don't. There's the used enamel bucket. But there's actually an unused version of the enamel bucket. Isn't that shiny? So there's the vault tech guy. I could feel it this time. Who manages the shop? There's our clothing vendor. Armor and weapons vendors. Farming's as honest as honest work gets. And the clinic. So we have a doctor. If you need fixing up. And an optometrist. Or whatever she's supposed to be. I'm assuming this is kind of an eye. It's an eye thing, right? No, I don't need your help. Stop trying to get me to talk to you. Ooh, it pisses me off. You guys, really? Why you gotta throw everything around? Now this shelf had a bunch of goodies on it, but of course they're all gone, fallen through the world. I should just give up trying to set things out and make it look realistic, right? Yeah, so there's the faux raptor opterator. <laughs> faux raptorator. Ah. And of course John's hanging out at the bar. He likes a bar. Oh, the liquor bottles are still there. Some of them. Not all of them. Looks like some of them fell through the world. Oh, you just had to change chairs, huh? You didn't like that bar stool for some reason? And of course the beer is on the floor. There was a cafeteria tray on this table. It's gone too. Man. That's such crap. But you get the idea. So there's the supermarket. And I think that's the whole settlement. We covered everything, didn't we? There's no animals here. No dogs or cats. Don't know why I never sent a dog over here. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't want any animals. Who knows? Let's take a look at the specs for this place. Defense almost 200. People 21. Well, actually, that's 20 settlers and one robot. The robots count. Plenty of food, adequate water. Happiness hovers in the 80s. I don't know why it's going down right now. But it's usually pretty good. 80s is as good as I usually get in my settlements. All right. So that's County Crossing. Hope you enjoyed it. Where will we go next time? Let's take a look. We will probably head out to Nordhagen Beach next. You see County Crossing is also sort of a little center for provisioners as well. Radiating out from County Crossing. Yeah, we'll go to Nordhagen Beach next time. 
Nordhagen is kind of out there in the middle of nowhere. But it's a nice little settlement. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you had fun. See you next time.